as you probably know by now, uh, on uh, Saturday or Sunday, I think it was Saturday, um, Israeli troops discovered the bodies of six hostages. And upon investigation, it transpired that the hostages had been killed within 48 to 72 hours, that they had been. Uh, basically, what had happened is Hamas had identified the Israelis at entering the tunnels uh, where they were holding uh, these particular hostages. Um, and uh, instead of Hamas just running or running and taking the hostages with them, uh, they basically just shot, murdered uh, these hostages, and they themselves ran off. Um, I don't know why anybody is surprised by this. Uh, this is to be expected, and I think one of the reasons and one of the challenges in finding the hostages is I think that the Israeli uh, army knows that as they approach finding these hostages, uh, the Hamas has, is very likely to just murder them. Uh, it, it has no incentive to uh, allow them to go free. Uh, you know, these uh, Hamas are monsters, and this is horrible, but yeah, I mean, uh, we all saw what happened October 7th. How, uh, how, why is anybody surprised by the fact that they are monsters? Of course they're monsters, and this is just one more expression of this monstrosity. These are people who are, you know, they're not a threat to them, and they don't pose a threat to them, uh, but they have don't serve a purpose either, and why not just... Uh, you know, uh, 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 murder them. So, uh, I mean, it, it truly is tragic, particularly given how close um, uh, the soldiers were to finding these hostages and potentially rescuing them. Uh, it's also, but I think the, the focus right now is on, I think the, the, the uh, what, do you, what would, you, would you call it? I think the false focus right now the, the horrible focus right now, the, the, I think, unjust focus right now, is on the fact that, uh, that if only Israel had cut a deal with Hamas uh, a week ago, two months ago, whenever, these hostages would have been freed by now. At least that is, that is uh, the thinking. This is, this is now... Um, uh, being expressed by the Biden, administra Biden administration, by Biden himself. This has been uh, expressed by uh, the parents of the hostages themselves, which is somewhat understandable. They're horrified by the fact that their loved ones have died. And this has been expressed throughout Israeli society. Now, it's hard to tell at this point how many within Israel believe this, how many of this Israel uh, advocate for this, but uh, there were massive demonstrations today in Tel Aviv. 200, uh, you know, according to the news reports, 250,000 people were out in the streets. That is a massive demonstration uh, in a small country demanding uh, an immediate uh, uh, deal be cut. Uh, and blaming, basically blaming, Biden is blaming, Biden came out today and said he blames Netanyahu. Uh, 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 the Israeli opposition parties are blaming Netanyahu. And much of the Israeli public, including the parents of the hostages, are blaming Netanyahu. Now, as you all know, I despise Netanyahu. I think the man is a pow power-lusting monster, um, and unbelievably incompetent, weak, uh, and, uh, and, and destructive, uh, and has been, it will go down in history as Israel's worst prime minister um, uh, over the last 15 years, and I think absolutely, unequivocally, justifiably so. But this is not something he should be blamed for, and, it, and indeed, it is outrageous that this is what is going on. And by the way, this is why Netanyahu should have resigned by now. He is too much, at a time when Israeli society needs to be united, he is, for good reason, a divisive character. 
he is bad for Israel. And people perceive him as such. And give him, people attribute to him horrible motivations, justifiably, not without cause. And as a consequence, instead of focusing on what the real issue here is, and who the real enemy is, and who the real devils are, so much of the debate, so much of the debate is focused instead on Netanyahu. And this is why he should have gone by now. They, he should have resigned. Uh, he should have quit. Even if it wasn't for another election, just another, somebody else need, needed to step in and, and take the premiership and take the responsibility. I think whoever that was would have probably done almost exactly the same as what Netanyahu has done. But it wouldn't have been perceived as, oh, he's just doing this for his own power lustful reasons. Anyway, Biden, the Israeli opposition parties, and the 250,000 people going out into the streets are playing into Hamas's hands. What Israel needs in order to win this, what Israel needs in order to achieve complete victory, real victory, and what I mean by real victory is the complete acceptance by the Palestinians of the fact that Israel will never go away, that they are defeated and that they have to give up and that they have to find a way to living with Israel. That is what it means, complete victory. Giving up on Hamas completely, giving up on all the political authorities today in the, in the, in the Palestinian Authority and a complete acceptance by the Palestinian population of the very existence of Israel and the complete acknowledgement of that and willingness to cut a deal, find a way to live together. What Biden is doing and what the Israeli opposition is doing and what the 250,000 people in the streets are doing, what they do is they keep giving the Palestinians hope. They keep leading the Palestinians to believe to believe that they can win or that they can really hurt Israel, that they can really cause damage. They keep believing that Israel will self-destruct, that Israel is, you know, cannot survive, will kill itself. And indeed that ultimately, if they can just keep going, if they can just keep doing this, that the whoever administration of the future will turn its back on Israel. And once, and I think the Palestinians really believe this, that once the Americans turn their back on Israel, Israel is finished. And Biden's giving them every reason to believe this. Yes, he sent dozens of ships to the Middle East. And yet, he is blaming the deaths of the hostages, to some extent at least, on Netanyahu, which is a massive travesty and an injustice. A hundred percent of the blame. Well, I mean, okay, I'm willing to, uh, I'm willing to actually, uh, you know, uh, argue that Netanyahu does own, uh, you know, uh, bear some of the burden here. But the burden is not that he has not negotiated a deal yet. Because a deal is a disaster. A deal is recognition. A deal is giving up on victory. And currently, supposedly what's holding up the deal is Netanyahu's insistence on keeping the Philadelphia corridor, which is the corridor adjacent to, uh, in Gaza, to the, the Egyptian border, under which there are over 150 tunnels of course Israel must keep that. Israel must not withdraw from that corridor. But even Netanyahu's own defense minister is saying, okay, we now need to give up on the corridor because now that hostages have been killed, we need to give up on the corridor. It's just unbelievable, the defeatist 
blame yourself mentality of these Israelis, of these stupid politicians. Netanyahu is guilty here, if anything, for dragging this war out 11 months. If the Israelis are guilty of anything, it's the fact that Sinwa is still alive. It's the fact that this wasn't done with in three months. The fact that there are still hostages there. Now, I said, and I know, I know nobody, you know, uh, this is super unpleasant, so I, I get it that this is tough to hear. But I said, when the war started, I said, forget about the hostages. You cannot fight a war assuming, you know, with, it, with, it, with hostages laying over your head constantly. Free them if you can. But other than that, go in there and crush the enemy. That will probably mean many of the hostages will be murdered. <sighs> Tragic as that is, it is the only way to attain victory. Instead, they went in slow. They didn't go to the Philadelphia corridor until a couple of months ago. They didn't do what was necessary originally to shut this down. They didn't isolate the bad guys. They didn't kill the people who needed killing. They succumbed to world pressure. They succumbed to the Biden administration. They did this with all due respect, all wrong. All of it, wrong. And now they don't have victory. They'll be perceived as weak. The world sees them as weak. And they are, Israel is weak. You can see by the fact that it doesn't attack Hezbollah and, and, and really, really, really devastate them, how weak they are, that it doesn't preempt Iran, that it isn't going after the nuclear program, how weak they are. And the fact that Israel now is tearing itself apart from the inside because of an evil committed by Hamas. I mean, the outrage in the world right now should not be focused on Netanyahu. The outrage in the world right now should be focused on Hamas. And the barrier to a deal has always been Hamas and always is Hamas. The reality is that Hamas could free the hostages tomorrow. They could be ceasefire. There could be an end to the war tomorrow. Hamas could surrender and release the hostages. That's all it takes. Why haven't we heard? A single political leader come out and say, now's the time, Hamas. Surrender and give up the hostages. Enough is enough. Enough of the suffering of the Palestinian people. Enough suffering for the Israeli people. Do it now. Why is that not the, the number one item on the agenda? Why isn't that the number one item on demonstrations in the West and in Israel and everywhere else? Instead, it's, oh, Israel should compromise more. Really? Israel is the victim here. Israel's compromised too much already. And every compromise, every compromise, as small as it is, gives more and more strength, more and more power to the most evil people within the Palestinian nation. By the way, right now as we speak, there, there is a, every day, until, I think, September 9th, there is an eight-hour ceasefire during the day where Israel will not attack, Israel does not fire, uh, in order for the UN and volunteers to provide polio shots to Palestinian kids, polio vaccines. Because one kid, first case of polio in 25 years among Palestinians, and he's sadly uh, already got... Um, Paralyzed in one leg. But notice, uh, that's the focus. The, these kids' parents have just murdered, um, just murdered six innocent people, completely helpless, shot them, tor tortured them. It wasn't one shot to the head and finished. They tortured them. And... Yeah, Israel's supposed to 
go through this quietly. Um, uh, one second. Somebody says that uh, the U.S. has seized uh, Maduro's plane. I guess just breaking news. All right, more news to cover. We'll see what this says. All right, um, not that important. All right, let's see. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, I feel really, 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 really bad for the parents of these kids. I feel really, really bad for their friends, for their family, for everybody. I mean, these six hostages were all young. They were in their 20s and 30s. Uh, they had a whole life in front of them. Again, they were just shot point blank. And um, I, I mean, this is Hamas. All the more reason to absolutely annihilate them. These are people who are still popular among Palestinians. These are people who are still supported among Palestinians. These are people who are still, still being protected by Palestinians. Sinwa supposedly is dressed as a woman and mingles in the Palestinian civilian population. People know, Palestinians know, they support, they stay quiet. And Israel somehow to blame. Netanyahu is to blame. Really unbelievable. 